Why so messy? 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 Ah! Hi, I'm Jameis. Welcome back. In the previous episode, Lewis had explained to us about the fundamental tension between the need to appreciate house prices in order to ensure retirement adequacy versus the need to keep housing affordable, especially for those who are just entering the housing market and stepping on that housing ladder. In order to get a better understanding of all that has transpired, I think it's useful for us to look at history. So here I am sitting at Stirling Road in Queenstown, which is one of the original first few blocks that HDB built. Now, of course, back in the time, this amounted to a few thousand dollars, which, to be fair, for incomes of the time, was still significant. Nevertheless, the goal of HDB at the time was always to ensure both accessibility and affordability. What do I mean by accessibility? Well, importantly, HDB was conceived with the objective of moving a large part of what was squatters in the central areas off to what was then the edges of Singapore town. Because of the need to do so quickly, the design of these flats were relatively simple. And you can see behind me, they were usually built with a single common corridor. They only extended up to seven floors. And importantly, they were put up in a relatively rapid fashion. Today, of course, we know that housing takes a significantly longer time in order for the construction to be completed. While we are assured that wait times could be as little as one to two years after the BTO, many of us know friends and family members that have had to wait for as long as five, six, or seven years after registering their interests. The other element of HDB was affordability. What you can see behind me, of course, is the original flats. But just down the road, you will see Dawson. Dawson, notably, is one of those areas in Singapore where flats used to cost, at the time of launch, about 600000 Unfortunately, now, it's much closer to a million dollars in the resale market. From these first initial housing projects in the 1960s, the objectives for public housing were wildly successful. Recall, the initial objectives were to resolve the housing crisis and to ensure that the masses of the Singaporean population were safely in public housing. As it turns out, thereafter, from an initial share of just around 8.8% housed in these public flats, we were able to raise this to something in excess of 80% of the population. Having resolved so much of these initial objectives of housing the public, HDB then turned its eye into other goals. This is just about when the Asset Enhancement Program came into place. In the 1990s, Singapore experienced a construction and property boom. House prices between 1990 and 1996 rose by more than threefold. In order to meet this demand, HDB started building all over the island. Unfortunately, as many of us know, in 1997, we had the Asian financial crisis. Prices of all assets, including housing, collapsed. As a result, HDB was left with a large stock of housing at the time. It was also during this time that HDB then introduced the so-called Built to Order Flats or BTOs. BTOs ensured that HDB wouldn't be left with massive unsold supply because flats would only be built on demand. As a consequence of these policies, many Singaporeans came to expect that their house prices would move in only one direction, up but never down. Singaporeans came to believe that their houses would in fact be a key source for their retirement. Unfortunately, in 2017, then Minister for National Development, Lawrence Wong, suggested that the SERS program would only apply 
to a small fraction of HDB flats. Hence, for the vast majority of Singaporeans, this would not be available for their retirement incomes and their flats would eventually expire with a value of zero. How then does the government plan to address this conundrum? We'll talk about that in our next episode. You know, we live in Singapore where not everyone um, has been able to afford a home. 